freedom from want, freedom from the scourge of poverty, from the despair of joblessness, the freedom to support oneself and one's family, the freedom to earn a living wage. On this, the 16th day of October 2013, the Franklin D. Roosevelt Freedom from Want Medal is awarded to the Coalition of Immokalee Workers. In 1993, a small group of farm laborers living in and around the small town of Immokalee, Florida, banded together to see if they could improve their wages and working conditions. After years of declining pay and exploitation at the hands of the growers and the major food conglomerates they served, few would have expected this small band of worker organizers to make much, if any, progress. But the coalition refused to be intimidated by the task, by the task before it. And between 1995 and 2000, a series of work stoppages and demonstrations, coupled with a 30-day hunger strike and a much-celebrated 230-mile march to Orlando, Florida, finally brought an end to the more than 20-year decline in the workers' wages. This modest accomplishment was welcomed among the people of Immokalee, but the meager wages that the farm workers were earning still placed them well below the poverty line. A new strategy was required. The coalition needed to find out where the real power to make change resided. The answer, it soon discovered, lay with the major corporate fruit food producers whose ceaseless demand for ever lower prices from their suppliers was a major factor in the downward, downward pressure on wages. Armed with this knowledge, and the fact that the Immokalee region grows over 90% of the winter tomatoes consumed in the United States, the Coalition of Immokalee Workers launched the first ever national boycott of a major fast food company, the Boycott of Taco Bell in 2001. Slowly but irrevocably, the boycott gained momentum from students, church groups, labor and community leaders, all united in their demand that Taco Bell and its parent company take responsibility for the human rights abuses that occur in the fields where its produce is picked. After four long years of struggle, Taco Bell finally agreed to meet not only all of CIW's demands, but also to call on other major food producers to do the same. Under the terms of the agreement, the fast food giant agreed to increase the amount it paid for tomatoes by a penny per pound, with the increase going directly to the workers' wages. The company also agreed to hold its suppliers to a code of conduct that would ensure that such practices as indentured servitude, which is tantamount to modern-day slavery, be brought to an end. Building on this success, the CIW turned its attention to the other major fast food chains through the launch of its campaign for fair food. Over the course of the next three years, similar agreements were reached with McDonald's, Burger King, and Subway, leaving Wendy's, take note, leaving Wendy's as the only holdout. Today, the Coalition of Immokalee Workers continues its fight for basic human rights, not only through its campaign for fair food, but also through its fair food program and its anti-slavery campaign. The fair food program has become a model for social responsibility, establishing a unique partnership among farm workers, Florida's tomato growers, and participating buyers. Under this program, the three parties established a code of conduct overseen by a fair foods council which helps ensure that the basic human rights of the workers are protected. Through its anti-slavery campaign, the CIW has uncovered and assisted law enforcement 
and the investigation of numerous multi-state farm slavery operations in the southeastern United States. Since its launch in 1997, the CIW's focus on slave labor has resulted in the liberation of over 1,200 workers and was a major factor in the passage of the Trafficking Victims Protection Act in 2000. <laughs> Taken together, the CIW's campaign for fair food, fair food program, and anti-slavery campaign have fundamentally changed the living and working conditions of thousands of farm workers across Southwest Florida. The CIW's victories represent a remarkable achievement for a grassroots community organization inspired by the simple yet immortal phrase, si se puede. It is a great pleasure to honor you today. Thank you and congratulations. Buenas noches a todos. Good evening, everyone. Pues quiero dar las gracias por este reconocimiento a 20 años de, tra de trabajo a favor de los trabajadores del campo. I want to say thank you. Um, thank you very much for this recognition of the 20 years of the work for human rights for farm workers. Y antes de continuar, yo quiero pedir a mis compañeros de Imocali que si se ponen de pie para recibir también este reconocimiento. And before continuing, I want to invite my compañeros from Imocali to stand up. Porque para nosotros como trabajadores es un honor el estar aquí. Because for us as workers, it is an honor to be here today. Porque cada día más se reconoce la humanidad de los trabajadores del campo. Because more and more the humanity of workers is being recognized. Y hoy estamos sintiendo una luz de esperanza. Today, we are finally feeling the light of hope. Gracias al programa por comida justa que hemos creado. Thanks to the Fair Food Program that we created. Con este programa, las mujeres que hoy trabajan en los campos piscando tomate para sacar adelante a su familia. And today, with this program, the women who pick tomatoes to support their families. No tienen que dejar su dignidad ahí en los surcos para sacar adelante a sus hijos. No longer have to leave their dignity in the tomato fields. Hoy tenemos una voz para denunciar y acabar con los abusos, especialmente lo que es el acoso sexual. Because women now have a voice and a way to stop the harassment and abuse that happened for too long. Y a nombre de todas las personas que trabajaron junto con nosotros, incluyendo a los compañeros que hoy no están aquí, con mucho orgullo recibimos este reconocimiento. On behalf of all who have fought side by side with us, and especially all the workers who aren't here now, we receive this award with great pride. Thank you. Gracias. It is an honor to be here today. We know we're not alone in this moment. There are many that have fought before us for the construction of a better world. Today, we're just following their steps. We remember their struggles because somewhere we've heard that all men are created equal. 
Somewhere we've read that everyone has the right to fair wages and working conditions to ensure a dignified existence. Somewhere we've read that everyone has the right to live, to be free, and to feel safe. Somewhere we've heard that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. These are ideals for the life we could only dream about. Today, for the first time in the history of the South, this dream is coming true for farm workers in Florida's agriculture. For the first time, we have a place at the table. In our struggle for better wages and working conditions, we're confident that this recognition will help us to arrive to the day in which our dreams will be made fully uh, will, we, will be made fully real and will inspire others to continue the journey in the construction of a food system that recognizes and respects human rights. Thank you. At the CIW, we always say there's nothing you, you can achieve by yourself so all three of us get a chance to talk. Um, we want to leave you tonight with a, a story that illustrates why this particular award, this particular recognition, means so very much to us in Immokalee. Twenty years ago when we first began organizing, Immokalee was a town defined by violence. Violence against women, beatings in the fields, modern-day slavery. It was a brutal an unforgiving place. And it was in that world that we would gather every week at a little borrowed room in the Our Lady of Guadalupe Catholic Church in town. We'd circle the little church chairs up, like those right there, and we would um, we'd pass this book around. This is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now, many of you may know it, many of you may not, but it's the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Some of you do. This book gave us hope. Hope that a better world was in fact possible, a more humane world was in fact possible. And this book gave us strength, the strength we needed to fight to make that world real. And so in a very real way, the legacy that Anna Roosevelt spoke about earlier of her grandparents, the tremendous, unequaled legacy in this country of hope and strength for the poor, for workers, for the disenfranchised, was we could directly tie our early organizing to that same legacy. The words of the preamble of this document are the four freedoms. And Anna's grandmother, with her fierce determination and unflagging commitment to human rights, fought to get it passed through the United Nations. So we have them to thank for that today. And that's why being here today feels a bit like coming home. Like our journey has come full circle. But at the same time, we know that our work has only just begun. Our work is not done, and it will not be done, until all farm workers live free from want. Until all farm workers live free from fear. And until all farm workers live free to enjoy the dignified life they deserve for the hard work they do. Thank you.